Here we are, clan the isms, cataclysm, great. Our people out here struggling, trying to make it in this state. Everybody out here doing it, but we the ones who late. Now family, we the ones who gotta delegate. Get that money in the power, never be fake. Stick to co side for three. What did he say? Uh, create jobs, support our own. Educate the same and buy back your home. Got three degrees, triple ten. Three PhDs, now we on the CNN. DBTV, let's talk about negligence. Ignorance is bliss, but we can turn into intelligence. Believe none of what you hear, half of what you see. Let's break it down here on Dr. Boyce TV. Here we are. Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, I am, uh, when I say I'm going to be quick, I really mean it this time. Um, I had to share this thought with you, um, and it had to do with uh, a message that a brother sent me today um, in my Facebook inbox. And uh, it has to, uh, he was sending me something about the racial wealth gap. And uh, I want to give him a shout out, actually, because this really got me thinking about something that I've always known. His name is Clausel Mathis, Clausel Mathis. Uh, this brother sent me over... Uh, a stat that many of us are familiar with. Um, it has to do with the racial wealth gap. A lot of us talk about the racial wealth gap and uh, how to close it. Um, a lot of people believe that it is uh, impossible to close. Uh, you've seen articles written where they say it would take 250 years for the gap to close. Um, well, the, you know, those articles, unfortunately, are written by people who don't know how to build wealth. Uh, they're also written by people who are under making a, the, the false assumption that uh, the wealth gap will close whenever white people decide that it's going to happen. So um, I'm not in that category. I believe that the gap will close when black people decide it's going to happen. Um, I believe that um, that it's important to learn how to build wealth. Uh, that's just what I believe. So here's what um, I want to dig into. Um, and that before I get started, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button, hit the share button, hit the subscribe button. And just a quick reminder, uh, if you wonder why I talk a little bit funny, it's because I got dental work and I'm trying to get used to... Uh, uh, this thing they're doing to kind of open my bite up a little bit. So I'm um, just a black man trying to be healthy. So uh, if anybody comes in and asks about it, if you could just tell them like, okay, this is what's going on now, pay attention, uh, that'll help. Because uh, one of the challenges is that uh, we have serious black folks and then we have juvenile black people. And I don't do well with juvenile black folks. You know, I'm, I'm actually more into being serious and solving problems. So let me lay out uh, this discussion with you very quickly about the racial wealth gap. Um, here's the deal. According to the Brookings Institute, the wealth gap between white families and black families uh, is basically 171,000 for white families, which is ten, nearly 10 times greater uh, than it is for black families, which is 17,150. Now, this was in 2016. The numbers are not that much different from what they were back then. Uh, that's pretty much where they are. That's what people are talking about, particularly when you talk about uh, what's going on with the, um, you know, with the elections and, and, and the stolen black wealth and reparations and all of that. A lot of that conversation centers around closing the wealth gap. If we close the wealth gap, that will be pretty huge, pretty massive. Here's the deal. Here's what I need you to understand. <clears throat> now, I, I need you to uh, open your mind a little bit, and I need you to uh, agree with me on one thing. The white man is not Jesus. Uh, he is not your God. I want, I want to, I, I have to start there just because I, I have to really help us really decompress and break out of our brainwashing a little bit. He's not Jesus. He's not God. He does not control all of this. Um, so, so if we can agree on that, give me a yes in the chat. If you can agree with me that he's not God and that you actually have, maybe you got a little God inside of you, but he is not your God. Now, why do I say that? Why do I start there? Because here's something that you probably don't uh, I, I doubt that anybody's ever broken it down to this way, but that's my job, right? You know, as a financial scientist, I'm supposed to be on the cutting edge of new ideas on some level. And that's what I'm trying to do. $171,000 as net in net worth is not a big amount of money for a person that is a consistent investor. Now, I want you to expand your imagination. Don't assume that I'm just, oh, he's just some rich guy who's acting like the money. And no, 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 no. No, 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 no. I was born in the project. Some of y'all were born in the projects. I was born in the projects too. Uh, I remember eating bologna sandwiches with no bread. I know what it's like to flick a roach off your sandwich and keep on eating. I've done all of that, right? You know, our family had to work our way up. Uh, I remember a time where we didn't have very much money. I, I remember what it's like to have completely empty pockets. So no matter how broke you've been, you've never been broker than me. Chances are you've never been broker than me. So don't, so this is not some rich out of touch guy who's trying to make it sound easy. I'm not doing that. What I'm talking at, what I'm speaking as is a financial scientist who understands 
uh, economic gravity in a way that most people don't get. One of the things that we do in the Black Business School, this is why the Black Business School is so special, is we actually put together something that you can actually have for free called the $5 a day investment plan. $5 a day investment plan. I put that together to help those who don't believe that Black people can accomplish anything. I did this for those who either have low self-esteem or just don't have a lot of confidence in the Black community's ability to build wealth or who just don't understand the wealth building process, who don't understand basic things. Uh, if you compare wealth building to like traveling, right? There are some people who believe that you can only get from New York to Los Angeles on an airplane. They don't understand that you can also get there in a car, you can get there on a train, you can get there on the bus, you can get there on the bike, you can get there on foot. And so, so you know, it, for, for people like that who only believe that you can travel from New York to LA on a plane, then if you don't give them a plane ticket, they will assume that that means they have to sit exactly where they are. But a person who understands how to travel can say, no, actually we can get in the car and if we start driving now, we'll be there in, in three or four days. Do you follow me? Give me a yes or no in the chat if you follow me. So why is this important? Well, $171,000 as net worth. Um, that is a number such that a person who follows the $5 a day investing plan, which any, almost anybody can follow, if you can afford to go to Popeye's Chicken, you can afford to invest $5 a day. If you can afford uh, new sneakers, you can invest $5 a day. If you can afford to go to the club, you can invest $5 a day. And we know a whole lot of Black people who can afford to go to the club. We know a whole lot of Black people who can afford Gucci. That's how Gucci stays in business a lot of times. We know a lot of Black people who can go out and buy the flyest clothes at the mall, right? So if you can buy the flyest clothes, you can go to Popeye's Chicken, you can go buy Gucci, then you can invest $5 a day. Really, a lot of Black folks can actually invest $10, $15, $20 a day. Because I know Black people who will spend $400, $500 a month on a car note, right? So, so $5 a day is $150 a month. I know people who will spend three times that amount on a car note. Give me a guess or no if you know about anybody in the chat who says that, if you're in the chat and you know somebody who, uh, you know, who says that they're broke, who says they can't build wealth, but will literally drop $400 a month on a car note. There are people out there that do that. That is absolutely um, interesting to me. Let me just say it's interesting. So here's my argument. My argument is I'm not here to shame you about your car note. I'm not here to dog you about going to the club or buying nice clothes. I'm here to simply ask you to invest as much in your own future as you put into um, the white man's future. You know, invest as much into your uh, children's future as you invest in Popeye's chicken. I'm asking you to love yourselves as much as you love everybody else, right? Uh, and so, because here's the deal. If you go look at the math, and I did the math, we, and if you go to the Black Business School, theblackbusinessschool.com, we actually have a little, a little class. It's really, really good. It doesn't cost that much. And it's called How to Turn Your Child into a Millionaire. It is a direct step-by-step -step blueprint on creating a millionaire within one generation or somebody who's close to being a millionaire, somebody who's worth, you know, three or $400,000. It's not hard to do. It's very, very simple, actually, if you know the financial science, if you understand investing. So, and so if you're interested, if you want to go take a look, feel free, go to theblackbusinessschool.com. We got specialists right there on the site that can guide you to where you got to go. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a great program. I think you're going to like it. We also have programs for kids and all that stuff. But, but, but let's get back to the point here. Um, a person who just does the $5 a day investing plan, in about 20 years, they would have a net worth, assuming that they don't pick up a lot of debt. That's the key thing. You got to avoid debt. Debt is a, an economic sand trap. So that means you got to watch out for a lot of credit card debt. You got to watch out for a ridiculous amounts of student loan debt. But literally within, within 20 years, that person's uh, investment portfolio, even if they were randomly picking stocks, like blindly picking and just adding a new, a new stock every month, like little, literally, like a person, literally, this has been proven through financial science. This is not me just giving you my two cents. It's not me just BSing you. Remember, you got, you got, I just keep having to remind you guys, I'm not a guy who's just talking on speculation. I had to do the math on this stuff. I, I was a math teacher at the University of Kentucky. So the math checks out that a person who consistently invests at the $5 a day rate, which is about $150 a month, which is not even enough to get you a decent car most of the time, that a person who does that consistently is going to have a net worth that exceeds the average white American, that exceeds 
the average white person. If you do it for 30 years, you're going to be being well, well beyond the average white American. You, you're you're going to have enough money that people are going to start to hate you and think that you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth. The reason I have a little bit of money now is because I've been investing my whole life. I've been investing in my education. I've been investing in assets. I've been trying to own things. I've been trying to start businesses for a long time. And that's how I got wealth. But 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 don't, but believe me, people who, who feel, uh, you know, who have an internalized victimhood, who have uh, been led to believe that Black people cannot do anything on their own, um, those people are going to look at you and they're going to say, how dare you find a solution? How dare you? Uh, have a better life than me? How dare you not be in the struggle? How dare you not be oppressed, right? They're going to get mad at you for that. That's, that's what's going to happen. And then when you go back and you say, you know, I'm going to go help the hood. I'm going to go help my people. I'm going to tell them what I did. Some of them are just going to get mad at you. They're going to say, no, you're rich. You, you're a rich person. You ain't got nothing to do with it. <clears throat> you don't know what it's like to struggle. You don't know what it's like. like they think you're born that way and, no, and nobody's born that way. You build yourself into what you want to be. So I'm just going to tell you, this is really for the people that really are looking for solutions. If you're looking to complain, um, you should go somewhere else to complain because there's plenty of black people that love to complain about the problem. I'm a person who wants to cook, uh, who wants to fix the problem. Um, I'm not going to complain about being hungry. I'm going to go get some food. Um, I'm not going to complain about the state being frozen. I'm going to figure out how to heat it up and cook it. So uh, the $5 a day plan, I wish I could find um, uh, the, the, the book. Uh, I, 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 I give away the ebook for free. Um, if you go to the blackbusinessschool.com, you can also ask them to say, hey, there's this $5 a day book. Can, can I get it for free? Uh, also, there's that program on how to turn your child into a millionaire or the, the Black Business School for Children, whatever it is you want to do. But either way, what I'm saying is that this wealth gap can be closed very easily. It can be closed um, individually. It can be closed as a family. Like you can literally make a pledge right now that nobody in your family is going to have a wealth level that is lower than the average white family. Like 171,000, now pay attention now. This is average white family net worth. Family, family. If you do what I tell you, you can do that. You, Every person in your family within 20 years can have more wealth than the average white family. So that means if you got five members of your family and all of you are worth $200,000 a piece, that's a million dollars worth of, of net worth. The average white family is at 171. So- you can close the wealth gap very easily on your own. You can close the wealth gap very easily as a family. And if I was able to, I can't do this. I don't have the power to do this. Um, I wish I had a big platform like, you know, like, like my, you know, my friend Ice Cube. He has millions of people watching. I wish I had millions of people that would listen to this, but I don't have that. I have a few hundred thousand. Um, but if I got everybody on the same page with that, like if, I, if we could get, you know, just, you know, 20% of the black community to follow that agenda, to just consistently invest, no matter what, like it's a religion, although we would, we would close the wealth gap significantly within one generation. And actually, a lot of Black people would actually be beyond where white people are. And, th and then you have a new set of problems. Your next problem will be that they would start to dislike you, you know, similar to what, you know, some, sometimes the Jewish community, because they teach wealth so much, they end up accumulating all the resources and then people get mad at them because they're rich. They're like, oh, he owns, they own all the buildings. They own all the property. They own all the assets. They own all the businesses. Right? Well, that's a mindset. That's a mindset. The mindset is, is ownership, asset accumu accumulation, et cetera. In fact, let me just say this and then I'll be done. If we, if we committed as much, if we committed our children as much to wealth building and, uh, and, and making money as we commit to playing basketball and playing football, if, if, if we committed as much energy to wealth building as we put into sports, which generates almost nothing for the community except for a select few, uh, you know, one guy out of 10,000 gets a big contract. So the other 9,999 9, 9, are trying to get the same thing and, and they all end up broke, well, a bunch of them do. <clears throat> if we committed as much energy to wealth building as we put into sports, then actually black people would have, um, you know, many millions of black people would have more, far more wealth than the typical a white community. In fact, actually, if you uh, if you really go hard with that plan, like so, for example, like I said, there are some people that have car notes that are four hundred dollars a month. If you put as much money into your stock portfolio as you put into a car note, and, you know the four let's say four hundred dollars a month, which would be approximately maybe let's say fifteen, uh, you know, ten to fifteen dollars a day on average, then you would end up having hundreds of thousands of dollars in net worth as long as you don't accumulate too much debt. 
That's why student loans, you got to be real careful about that because that's a huge economic trap. A lot of black wealth is going backward. I've analyzed this and I've said it before and I'm going to say it again. A lot of your wealth is going backward because you have people that, that think they're going forward, but they're really not. Uh, a lot of your wealth is going backward because your wealth is supposed to be accumulated by the most educated people in your community. But unfortunately, the most educated people in your community are acquiring so much debt that it's weighing them down financially. And they're not picking up the skill sets necessary to actually go out and start businesses and really make the big money. The big money, the multimillionaires and billionaires don't have jobs. Like, you don't, there's no, there's no job I can think of that pays you, you know, a quarter million dollars a month, right? That, that, there's no job out there like that unless you're playing for the, you know, the Dallas Mavericks. Um, you know, so the fact that we have the whole community of job seekers who go deep into student loan debt just so they can get a better job and then have no skills for asset accumulation or business acquisition is exactly what's pulling the wealth down. So then you have to go and you have to challenge the way black people are being educated, even at some of our HBCUs. You have to consciously ask how many of these young people are being taught to run businesses versus how many of these young people are being taught to go look for a job, right? If you look, and I'm just telling you that that's, that's what's happening in America. That's why you have rich people and that's why you have people who are not rich. Uh, it doesn't mean that poor people are bad, but it, but it also doesn't mean all rich people are bad. Because maybe you can say poor people are different from rich people. Rich people are different from poor people. Um, and, and a lot of that comes back to mindset, right? So, so give your children the greatest gift you can give them by giving them a wealth builder's mindset. When you, when you talk about that gap, that wealth gap, again, like I said, it's almost like I, I, the way my mind sees it, I go back to basic uh, equations in physics, like distance equals rate times time, right? So when I see the wealth gap, I see a physical gap. I see a distance. Like if I'm in Chicago and the, there's a gap between here and LA, right? So I look at that gap and I say, how do we close that gap? How do I get to LA? Right? I, you know, some people only know one mode of transportation. They, they only know how to get on an airplane. They think the only way I can get to California is if I get on a plane. Well, I, I compare that to black people who think that the only way the wealth gap can be closed is if white people decide they're going to close it. If white people pass a law you know, write a check for reparations, then it'll close. When white people start offering better jobs, then it'll close. That's that's one method that will certainly make it easier, right? It would be easier to get to LA if I have an airplane, right? But that gap, that distance, that that cat can be skinned in a multitude of ways. I can get to LA on a helicopter. I can get to LA in a truck. I can get to LA on a bus. I can get to LA on a motorcycle. I can get to LA on a 10 speed. I can get to LA on foot. I can get to LA on foot. And so a, a determined person who is traveling on foot will go further than an undetermined person who spends 20 years waiting for a plane ticket. If you just start walking now, then you'll get there. So what I'm saying is that this wealth gap, which I want you to visualize it as a, like the gap between Chicago and Los Angeles, this wealth gap is something where we're sitting here politely waiting for white people to bring us a plane ticket. We're sitting here and we're saying we deserve a plane ticket because of what we've gone through. And we deserve a plane ticket because this gap is atrocious. Uh, we deserve a plane ticket because you owe us. And they do. Absolutely. They completely do. But I don't know if that ticket's coming anytime soon. I really don't. And, uh, and what I would encourage you to consider is that, you know, God gave you feet for a reason. He gave you legs for a reason. You know, and some of y'all got more than legs. Some of y'all got a Corvette in the garage. Some of y'all might have a chopper that you can you, that you can hop on. Some of y'all got a bus pass, you know? So what I'm saying to you is I want everybody in here to just imagine this. We're trying to close that gap. And I want you to just kind of join me and say, you know what? The plane ticket probably isn't coming anytime soon. So uh, I want everybody to just agree with me that you're going to at least go get a bus pass. Let's all go down to the bus station, to the Greyhound station, and let's get us a bus pass. So that while we're waiting for our plane ticket, we're going to be traveling down the road. And if it takes long enough for the plane ticket to arrive, then that's okay. Because by that time, we will have traveled to L.A. and, go, and then gone all the way back across the country. Instead of traveling 2,000 miles, maybe we travel 5,000 miles by the time that happens. So, so at the end of the day, what I'm really trying to tell you is that white people are not God. They are not the only be-all, end-all to you achieving your goal. 
Um, they're not the only way, you know, it's like when they go to church and they tell you that Jesus is the only way to get to God. Well, white people are not the only way for you to get to wealth. Like you can actually get wealth by just taking what you have. You got 1.3 trillion to work with. A lot of your families, I, I, I put together the math on the $5 a day program. You can make it a $10 a day, $20 a day. That, that only accelerates it. Somebody who does that consistently will be in such a good position that by the time the reparations checks come out, they, they, they won't even need the money. They won't even need the money. So, um, so, so, so that's, that's what I wanted to share. It was, it was uh, something that just really hit me almost like a lightning bolt. It's like, I've always known what the gap is. I've always known how much it is. And I said, you know, maybe I could just make a quick appeal and help people understand that the distance between 171,000 and 17K is, it's, it's not that big if you have a whole generation to make up the, dis the distance. It's not that, I mean, what, what's 171 minus 17? What, let me do the math, Tasha. Uh, was it 154? So $154,000 is a net worth. Do you know how many millions of Black people there are who have acquired acquire far more wealth than that? Just take somebody who buys a house, who bought a house, you know, 20 years ago for 150 grand, and now the house is worth half a million. Well, that person now has more wealth than the average white person. It's not calculus. This ain't some insurmount. This ain't you ain't trying to end slavery. You ain't you're not trying to solve the equation your ancestors had to solve. Your ancestor was like sitting, you know, in in 1784, trying to figure out how am I going to get away from this slavery thing? How am I going to figure out how to go get far enough north to get, to go to Canada? Right? How do I follow the North Star and not get shot and ate up by dogs on my way and starved to death? Right? They have real problems. You don't have a real problem. You don't have a real problem. Your path is right there in front of you. And maybe if, if you want to, you can think of me as your, your financial Harriet Tubman. Maybe I'm a little bit like Harriet because I don't have much patience. I will shoot you if you get out of line. If you come in and try for Negroes, get shot up in our platform. That means I'm, I'll put you out and you're out forever. But but for those who are serious, um, I know the way. I know the way. Not only have I traveled this path a thousand times, but I've studied it like a scientist. And I know exactly what to do, what to avoid and how to make sure master doesn't kill you. So that's all I want to say. I'm done. Um, it just hit me. And I know um, I talk a lot, but, you know, I hope that this helps you because you guys, I mean, this is, this is doable. This is all doable. And, and I, I do believe we can do anything, but this isn't even the hardest thing that Black people have to confront to deal with. Closing the wealth gap, actually, honestly, again, if I, let's say I became the coolest person on the planet for about two years. And let's say I became like a really famous rapper or something, because we only listen to rappers. We don't listen to scholars. That's one of the reasons why we fall behind, honestly. Uh, so let's say I became the coolest, most significant rapper in America, and everybody followed the, the advice of Dr. Boyce. And I said, I need y'all to do one thing. I need y'all to every family, I need every family to do something similar to the $5 a day investment program. And let's say that everybody did it. Let's say every family that can afford Popeye's chicken put the same amount of money after they bought their chicken, they would go buy their shares of stock and everybody did the same thing. I promise you that within one generation, the wealth gap would, would, would either, it would either shrink significantly or it might disappear altogether. Because the, the other thing that you don't, that you forget, because yeah, I'm going to definitely save the lives. The other thing you forget as you, as you put white people on this magical pedestal, like they can do nothing wrong, is that white people are not perfect either with their money. They're not perfect with their resources. There are lots of white, millions of white families that get ton, that are that inherit money and lose all their money within a generation because they have the, some of the same ridiculous consumer habits that a lot of us do. You know, so so stop thinking white people are perfect and wonderful and they have it all together because they really don't. They really don't. So if you come in and you're smarter and you're sharper and you know where the money is and your kids kind of know how to acquire resources and acquire property. Oh, they they can they can go in and, and clean up. They can clean up just like the Chinese. The Chinese are cleaning up in the United States because they have a wealth strategy that allows them to benefit significantly from American uh, economic extravagance. Right? Like Americans are just bad with money, just generally speaking. When I did, I'll say that I'm gonna tell a story. Then I'm gonna be done. I'm gonna be done. Uh, I did a research stint in 2006 with the Center for European Economic Research when I was at Syracuse. I did a, a summer there where I was writing research papers in, in Europe uh, with these Germans. And, um, and when I was in, and I was working in my office and one of my colleagues came in and he asked me, he said, what is wrong? He said, what is, what's it, what, what is wrong with you Americans? 
And I was like, I don't know. What, what's wrong with you? Like, I didn't, I didn't know what he was talking about. And he said, he said, I was looking at Z data and in Germany, we make less money than you do. We pay more in taxes than you do, but we save five times more than you do. And he wasn't talking about black people. He was talking about Americans. And that was when it hit me. I said, my God, like Americans, we are really bad with money. We, we don't save the way we should. We overspend. They, you know, corporations, it's, it, it all comes from, from how you're educated. You're poorly educated. The, the, the public school system is crap. And then on top of that, you, you sort of, they put a credit card in your mouth and then you, you just spend that sucker all day because that's what you think you're supposed to do. And next thing you know, you're in these horrible financial straits and you don't know exactly how you got there. Just know that that's not the only way. There are other countries where they have a completely different view on their finances than we have in the United States. So I encourage you, get, you know, just get off the grid, get off the, get off the nonsense grid, be smarter, think about your family. And when it comes to your family, you can close that wealth gap like that. Some of y'all are probably already there. Some of you already have over $200,000 in net worth or whatever. Those of you who are not there yet, just take my word for it. Be a consistent investor. Never waste more than you invest, right? So if you're if you if you're dropping some some if you you know if you're making it rain over here in the left hand, just make sure you're investing with the right hand. It's okay to make it rain. It's okay to enjoy your money. It's okay to buy Jordans or a new car, or whatever that you want to get. I'm not going to judge that. In fact, I think you should enjoy your life. You should enjoy your money. The problem is when you don't handle your business first. Just handle your business. It should be as serious. Uh, investing should be as serious to you as tithing is to a Christian that goes to church. They tell you every week, 10%, you know, to, to the Lord or 10% to the pastor or whatever it is. Well, you should be tithing to yourself. So maybe that would be a good way to go. Just say, I'm going to tithe to my future. I'm going to tithe to my family. My religion is black economic power. And every single day or every week, I'm going to do whatever I can. I might not be able to do what I want, but I'm, I can always do what I can. You understand? So, so don't always, you may not be able to do what you want, but at least do what you can. Okay. All right. Do we got it? Make sense. Give me, give me a yes or no. If you get what I'm, what I'm saying here. Um, I'm going to go do me a favor. If you're watching online, please hit the thumbs up button. If you haven't hit the thumbs up button, please do that. Uh, also a uh, reminder, the all black national convention starts this week. If you want to learn more, uh, go to all black national convention.com. That's all black national convention.com. Thirdly, if you want to take a look at our program for children, uh, on how to build wealth in children. I'm a big believer that you, if you teach your kids now, they're going to be light years ahead of everybody else. They're not going to have the same problems that the community's having. They're actually going to be the wealth builders of the future. They're going to be really successful, really secure, and very happy. Uh, feel free to take a look at our children's program. It's very good. It's blackmillionairesoftomorrow.com. That's blackmillionairesoftomorrow.com. And they can get a little certificate. They can put on their wall, almost like a college degree. And they get to say they graduated from the Black Business School, which is really, really beneficial for their self-esteem. So anyway, guys, I'm out of here. Thank you for bearing with me as I talk funny because I'm trying to get used to what they're doing in my mouth. They're stre they're literally stretching out my mouth. That's why that's why I end up talking kind of weird. But just know in about maybe six weeks or so, I'll have a smile like Denzel Washington. So maybe it'll be all worth it. So take care, guys. Love you and uh, have a great day. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Here we are, clan the isms, cataclysm, great. Our people out here struggling, trying to make it in this state. Everybody out here doing it, but we the ones who late. Now family, we the ones who gotta delegate. Get that money in the power, never be fake. Stick to co sign for three, what did he say? Uh, create jobs, support our own. Educate the same and buy back your home. Got three degrees, triple ten. Three PhDs, now we on the CNN. DBTV, let's talk about negligence. Ignorance is bliss, but we can turn it to intelligence. Believe none of what you hear, half of what you see. Let's break it down here on Dr. Boy's TV. Here we are.